بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته How are you my students? I hope that you're happy and healthy and ready for today's lesson which is the conversation of the unit 4 but before we do that if you remember in our previous lesson we studied the uh, hypothetical present hypothetical conditionals and the past hypothetical conditionals what does hypothetical mean? Yes, very good. It means that something is not real or something that is imaginary. We use the present hypothetical conditionals to talk about imaginary situations. We use the uh, simple past in the if clause and in the result clause we use would, could or might. On the other hand, in the past hypothetical conditionals we use it to talk about things that did not happen in the past, things that did not happen. We use it often to express regret and criticism. We use the past perfect in the if clause and in the result clause we use would have, could have or might have again in the uh, result clause. And we took, we learned about the implied conditionals. You don't have to say it, it is implied rather than stated directly. We would have helped you if you had asked us and so on and we also learned about as if and as though for unreal situations when we talk about something that's unreal or untrue we can use as if and as though plus a past or past perfect verb to suggest that something is unreal or untrue for example he talks as if he were an expert he talks as if he were an expert. Is he an expert? No, of course. And remember, we said here, where. Why? Because either was or where, either one of them, can be used with the subjects I, he, she, or it. However, where is uh, more formal and generally used, especially in writing. And remember the uh, two clauses, the clause in the conditional clause and can go either order. So we have the if clause and the result clause. You can begin with either of them, either one. But if you begin with the if clause, put the comma when you finish, then begin the result clause. And when you begin with the result clause, don't use any commas. If I knew the answer, comma, I tell you, I tell you if I knew the answer. So this is the only difference there is. You can choose to begin with the if clause or the result or the main clause. So jumping to today's objectives to employ the real talk in short conversation, answer questions about the conversation. Do you ever talk to uh, friends when you have a problem uh, that you can not decide on what to do? Do your friends give you good advice? Do you follow it? So, when you are facing a dilemma, a problem, do you take, do you talk to your friends? Do you ask for their advice? Or uh, do you go to someone else? Or maybe just one friend, there's one friend that you go to. So, again, do you ever talk to friends when you have a problem and can't decide what to do? This is a dilemma here. Do your friends give you good advice? Do you follow it? So, if they, uh, if they gave you advice, do you follow it or do you uh, ask uh, some more uh, people? So you have to decide. What is the boy in the photo doing? What is the boy in the photo doing? Page 52, if you open your page, uh, if, you, if you open your book to page 52 in the conversation, listen, look at the picture there. What is the boy in the picture doing? So is he doing something right or wrong, ethical or unethical, moral or immoral? Yes, of course from the picture he's doing something wrong, something immoral, something unethical. So what, what is he doing? So he is stealing clothing from a store. So he went to a clothes store. Instead of buying it, paying money for the clothes, he is stealing them, putting the uh, uh, clothes inside his jacket so no one can see them. And of course, this is wrong. This is unethical. So what is the boy in the photo doing? 
he is stealing clothing from a store. So you're going to listen to a conversation between two friends that involves stealing. Khalid is asking his friend for advice. So you can see here Khalid and uh, Majid. Khalid is uh, saying here, can I talk to you about a problem I'm struggling with? I'm struggling. I'm having a hard time with this problem. This is what it means to be struggling. When someone says to you, I'm struggling with this problem, it means that he's having a, a really hard time trying to come up with a solution for this problem. So Khalid is asking his friend Majid for advice. He said, can I talk to you about a problem I'm struggling with? His friend immediately said, sure, sure. What's going on? That is what friends do. They, uh, they listen to your problems and together you try to come up with a solution. So let's listen to the conversation now together. Khalid, can I talk to you about a problem I'm struggling with? Majid, sure. What's going on? Khalid, well, I've been working at a clothing store in the mall for a month now. Last week, I saw a guy I work with stuffing a shirt into his bag. When I asked him about it, he acted all innocent. Then this week, I caught him taking a pair of pants. This time he promised me he wouldn't steal anything again and begged me not to tell the manager. Majid, so what are you going to do? Khalid, that's the problem. I don't know. If I told the manager, he would get fired. Majid, yeah, but now that you know about it, if you don't tell the manager, you'll be helping him get away with stealing. He's put you in a rotten position. Khalid, I know. What do you think I should do? Majid, the way I see it, if he's stolen twice before, he's likely to steal again. Do you think he might even steal from the cash register? Khalid, I wouldn't put it past him. Majid, it seems to me that you may get yourself in trouble if you don't blow the whistle on him. Of course, it's your call. But if I were you, I would let the manager know. Khalid, yeah, you're probably right. So you can notice here in the ending, the Majid said, if I were you, I would have tell I would have told the manager. See here. But if I were you, I would let the manager know. So this is the uh, let's say the to uh, uh, the summary of Majid's answer. If I were you, I would have told the uh, manager. If I were you. I would let the manager uh, know. Khaled replied, yeah, you're probably right. What is the relationship between Khaled and the boy who is stealing the clothes? Are they friends or co-workers? So what is the relationship between Khaled and the boy who is stealing the clothes? Are they friends or are they co-workers? So what's the relationship between Khaled and the culprit, let's say, the 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 boy who's stealing uh, the clothes. So the correct answer here: the boy is Khalid's co-worker. What does it mean to be co-worker? Yes, someone who you are working with, someone who you are working with. If you work with someone, just like the example here, when you work with someone in a store. He is, the relationship between you and him is called co-worker. It means that we work together in the same place. So what's the relationship between Khalid and the boy who is stealing the clothes? Are they friends or co-workers? The boy is Khalid's co-worker. So let's listen again now and try to read along. So listen again now to the conversation and while listening, Try to read along the conversation. So read while you are listening. So let's listen again. Khalid, can I talk to you about a problem I'm struggling with? Majid, sure. What's going on? Khalid, well, I've been working at a clothing store in the mall for a month now. Last week, I saw a guy I work with stuffing a shirt into his bag. When I asked him about it, he acted all innocent. Then this week, I caught him taking a pair of pants. This time he promised me he wouldn't steal anything again and begged me not to tell the manager. Majid, so what are you going to do? Khalid, 
That's the problem. I don't know. If I told the manager, he would get fired. Majid, yeah, but now that you know about it, if you don't tell the manager, you'll be helping him get away with stealing. He's put you in a rotten position. So notice here when Majid asks sure what's going on, he said, I work in the in a clothing store. Last week I saw a guy I work with. That's why we call them co-workers. I saw a guy I work with stuffing a shirt into his bag. Stuffing a shirt. It means stuffing it means to put something inside. He's stuffing a shirt inside uh, his bag when I asked him about it. So he didn't uh, see uh, his co-worker stuffing the shirt into his bag. When he, when he saw them, he went and asked him about it. He acted all innocent. What does it mean to be innocent? Yes, innocent, it means that you didn't do something wrong. He acted all innocent as if he didn't do something wrong. This then, this week, I caught him again for a second time taking a pair of pants. This time he promised he wouldn't steal. So he promised he wouldn't steal, which means that he confessed. Not like the first time he acted innocent. The second time he, uh, he confessed and promised to not steal uh, anything again and begged me, begged me not to tell the manager. So Majid, what are you going to do? Khalid, that's the problem. I don't know if I told the manager he would get fired. If I tell the manager, my coworker would get fired. So he still cares about his coworker. He doesn't uh, want him to get fired. And in the same time, he can't uh, see what's wrong here and uh, do nothing about it. So this is the dilemma here. Majid says, yeah, but now that you know, this is, a, this is a strong point here. Now that you know about it, if you don't tell the manager, you'll be helping him get away with stealing, he's put you in a rotten position. So if you don't tell the manager about it, the manager would think that you are helping him, right? The manager would think that you're helping him to steal clothes. That's why, uh, that's the reason for this uh, dilemma. As he said here, he's put you in a rotten position. So let's continue the article here. Khalid, I know. What do you think I should do? Majid, the way I see it, if he's stolen twice before, he's likely to steal again. Do you think he might even steal from the cash register? Khalid, I wouldn't put it past him. Majid, it seems to me that you may get yourself in trouble if you don't blow the whistle on him. Of course, it's your call. But if I were you, I would let the manager know. Khalid, yeah, you're probably right. So, Khalid, I know, what do you think I should do? So Majid here, he is being logical. He's being logical, he's being reasonable. The way I see it, if he's stolen twice before, he's likely to steal again. He said, you caught him twice. So he will do it again in the uh, future. You can't trust him. You can't trust him. Do you think he might even uh, steal from the cash register? So it's more than clothes, money. He said, I wouldn't put it uh, past him. It seems to me that you may get yourself in trouble if you don't blow the whistle on him. So that's correct. If you don't tell the manager, you are the one that would be in trouble because the manager will say, you know that he's stealing. Why didn't you tell me? So go with the, um, go with the moral and ethical uh, path. So again, here, uh, it seems to me that you may get yourself in trouble if you don't blow the whistle on him. Of course, it's your call. It's up to you. It's your call, your decision. But if I were you, I would let the manager know, yeah, you're probably right. So this is the real talk here. Rotten means bad. When he said he put you in a rotten position, I wouldn't put it past him. When he asked about, do you think that he stole that he had uh, stolen something from the cash register. He said, I wouldn't put it past him. I believe he would do that. When you say, I wouldn't put it past him, it means that you believe that he would do that. Yes, blow the whistle on him. 
to blow the whistle, to reveal and put a stop to wrongdoing. To blow the whistle on someone, to reveal, to tell the manager and put a stop to wrongdoing. Call, as I said before, means decision. So who says each expression and why? The word rotten, who says it and why? Of course, we've just answered this one, but try to uh, refresh your memory. Who said the word rotten and why? Majid says this by asking Khalid not to tell the manager. The boy has put Khalid in a bad position, rotten position. He has to choose between loyalty to a co-worker and to his manager and the store. I wouldn't put it past him. So who said this one, Majid or Khalid? And why? Yes, Khalid says this because he thinks the boy will probably steal again. And uh, that the expression always implies a negative or wrong action. I wouldn't put it past him. Khalid says this because he thinks the boy will uh, probably steal again. And uh, try to point out that the expression always implies a negative or wrong action. Blow the whistle on. Who says this one? Blow the whistle. Majid says this. He means that Khalid should tell his manager what's happened. To blow the whistle, to let everyone know. Blow the whistle. Majid says this to tell his friend Khalid, you should tell on him. Last one, the word call. Who says this one? Yes, Majid says this. He means that Khalid has to make the decision. So when you say it's your call, it means your decision. This word is often used in sports with referees or, um, uh, or uh, umpire. In a game makes calls about uh, plays such as foul, fair, safe, or out. So uh, when, you, when you say the, the, uh, the referee's call, it means that his decision about a play, a foul or a penalty or something. Here's a cultural note for you. A whistleblower, a whistleblower is a person in a company or organization who reveals problems or unethical behavior happening in the company in order to stop it. This is a difficult role to play as the whistleblower risks getting into trouble. In the US, there are now whistleblower laws to protect the rights of the whistleblower. So I think this is a position where some employees of the company might hate you because you're revealing their problems to the management, but it is necessary to uh, do it. About the conversation, we have three questions here. What's the problem is Khalid struggling with? If you remember, he said, I'm struggling. What's the problem? Yes, so, uh, someone he works with is shoplifting and he doesn't know whether to tell the manager or not. What is Majid's opinion? What is Majid's opinion? Yes, Majid thinks he should tell the manager. He said, blow the whistle on him. Tell the manager that uh, the, your co-worker is stealing or you would be in trouble. Number three, what do you think Khalid will do? So, what do you think Khalid will do? This is up to you. What do you think? Will, uh, will he tell the manager or not? Maybe he will take, he, maybe he will talk to his coworker again. What do you think he will do for me? I think that he will tell the manager because his coworker stole, uh, has stolen twice. This is more than um, enough. Your turn, create your own conversation. Tell your partner about situation you're struggling with and ask him for advice, of course. Your partner will give you his or her opinion. This is the box for giving an opinion. When you want to give an opinion, you can use any of these uh, phrases. In my opinion, then you say your opinion. I feel or I believe, or you can say as far as I'm concerned, then you continue. The way I see it, then you continue talking. It seems to me that, or you can say, I would think, or I would say that, and so on. So we have more than one way to express or to give an opinion. Which expression does Majid use to introduce 
his opinions. So, which expressions does Majid use here? So, let's see the answer. He said, the way I see it, and it seems to me that the way I see it, this one here, and it seems to me that. So, he uses these uh, these two. And with that, we reach the end of this lesson. See you next lesson, inshallah. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu anna la 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 tazakhfrik wa tubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum.